What's up everyone, Name Code Dustin here, talking about not the biggest guys, but the second biggest guys. Power Fours! Before we get into it, I don't know, was Dustin fishing there? And go ahead, talk a little bit about DraftKings. <laughs> We're bringing our t-shirt promotion back. I know hey. you are excited as much as we are. But if you do like fantasy basketball, then you're going to like daily fantasy basketball. Sign up for DraftKings. Use the promo code FST. Follow the link in the description or the card. Sign up, deposit at least five or more dollars. DraftKings will give you an entry to a free game. And we will give you a t-shirt as long as you sign up in the month of October. Wins all around. Go ahead and sign up. All right, let's talk about Tier 1, and obviously our number one overall fantasy player, and pretty much universal, is Anthony Davis. But number two, and also in Tier 1, is DeMarcus Cousins, and there's a real case that can be made that you would take DeMarcus Cousins even second overall. Some of the things, they, Cousins averaged the same amount of points as Davis, same amount of steals as Davis. He actually averaged more boards and more assists than Anthony Davis. A little bit less blocks, not as good a field goal percentage, and more, and he had more turnovers. But all that combined, I mean, they're very similar players, so it's, you know, they're definitely 1A, 1B almost. I mean, Anthony's still number one, but DeMarcus Cousins, he's, an, he's a sick basketball player. And he's put some of that attitude stuff behind yeah. him. I mean, he's he's not as much of a head case. I'm sure he still is, but it doesn't yeah. show as much. A surefire first rounder, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Tier two, I want to talk about two guys that I, I always love guys that do stuff at their position that that position doesn't normally do. So I love power forwards that get me the three. It's just a nice little bonus. You know, Millsap's a guy that I've always been a huge fan of. Gets you a three a game. Gets you close to two steals a game. Gets you a block a game. I mean, he's not going to score as many points as some of these other guys, but he's still just very serviceable all the way around. And then Ibaka's another guy I want to talk about. You know, even a guy at the power forward position to have a guy that gets over two blocks a game is a very nice thing to have. But then he's he's surprisingly shoots threes as well. I mean, it's you know, he, weird that he does. Too. <laughs> he might not. I mean, I was I think I was telling Brett in the rankings like I can't remember the last time I've seen a guy average over two blocks a game and over a three a game. I mean, that's those two just don't, don't <laughs> go together. Maybe it was because Durant was out, he was shooting more of those than he normally would. But still, you know, he can make them, and he's just a fun guy that you can get. You know, not a huge price tag on him, you know, late enough to where I think he's still going to give you enough value. All right, as we look at Tier 3, the guy first guy I want to highlight is Kevin Love. And there's a lot of, like, bad taste, like, oh, did Kevin Love really mesh with LeBron? How's he fitting on the Cavs? Well, he signed that long-term deal with them, so obviously he likes it being there, so that's kind of put to rest. And, and he also likes money, of course, because they can pay it more. <laughs> but, fantasy-wise, 16.5 points, 11.8 boards, and two threes made per game, those are sick fantasy numbers. I mean, he pretty much, now granted it's down from his days in Minnesota, but those are still unbelievable numbers. I actually think he's turned into a steal based on where he's going in drafts. The other guy I'm talking about, sorry Dustin, is a guy that Dustin absolutely loves. Absolutely loves, so I have to talk about him. Noel? Yes. What's and, not to like him? <laughs> exactly. So he's not a scorer, right? They have Okafor there to be the scorer. So you're looking at a guy that, you know, could he average 10 points? Sure. but you know, he could average a double-double, so 10 points, Of course points, he's going to average 10 points. He probably is going to average 10 points. He <laughs> looks like he could average 10 boards. But the one thing that he could also do is average two blocks and two steals a game. That is a Specialist. defensive powerhouse. Those really add up for you, and they cannot be, you know, kind of pushed to the side. Don't look at only points when you're building a fantasy team. you got to look at the other stuff, too. He averaged 9.9 .9 points a game last year. You don't think he's going to get point I mean, one more? Yeah, like I said, he probably is. Oh, for there, he's going to shoot more. He's not the best offensive player. I'm That's all. A, yeah, that, I will definitely agree with that. Markeith Morris is a guy I want to talk about. Now, here's a guy whose offensive game has been progressing. You know, he's he's been around for a little while. He's been waiting for his turn to get the minutes, and they're there now. And I think he has a huge upside. I do like Morris. And then Kenneth Fareed. I mean, he's just a guy I've always enjoyed. He's just fun to watch play. I mean, he, he just goes out there and just leaves it all out there. I do like, you know, he gets you stats pretty much across the board. He is a little bit inconsistent and sometimes can be frustrating to own, but he's still a fun player that you can get and enjoy watching him play. All right, in Tier 5, I'm just going to be talking about one guy that I really like, and that's Jabari Parker. Now, granted, he's listed as a power forward because that's what he played last year, but 
Gunro's going to take, you know, take some center spots, but also going to play some four. Therefore, he's going to play some three. But who cares about all that? What Parker's going to do is score. This kid <laughs> can absolutely score. He's going to average over 10 points. I think he's, even though he was banged up last year, he grows year over year. Looking at like 15 points, and he's going to get you maybe close to one and a half steals a game. He's going to probably get you like six boards. Parker across the board is just a, he is an NBA solid player. I like where you can get him in drafts. Tier 6 got a couple of uh, very interesting players. A lot of young guys in this tier, but the first one's Julius Randle for the Lakers. I mean, you look at that Lakers lineup and just who's going to do what, and, and they really need someone to step up. And Randle is healthy. You know, Paul Gasol's been in with, uh, he's in with Chicago. So, you know, he's out of the way, obviously. He was out of the way last year, but Randle was hurt. But he has a huge opportunity here. And like we've been talking about in a lot of the shows, it's talent. And it's opportunity. It's just two things out there. And he's got both. We like Randall. We think he has a huge upside. And then Pazingas for the for the uh, Knicks. Now here's a guy that definitely got a lot of hate when they drafted him. You know, why would you take a guy that needs to develop? We need to win now. We need to keep Carmelo happy. But he's still a very talented player. I mean, he, he, it's a gamble. You know, and you might have to wait him out for six weeks or so before he actually starts doing anything. He might be frustrating, but. He's very talented. There's a reason he got drafted where he got drafted. And he's the epitome of a big guy that can do things that aren't normal. <laughs> this guy can shoot. I mean, he can straight up lights out. Not lights out, but he's a solid shooter. Stretch the floor. Kind of like that. He's going to hit some threes. All right, tier seven. Since I stole some of that tier, I'm going to talk only about one as well. And that is Tristan, Tristan Thompson for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And while I like him and I think he can produce and be a solid fantasy talent, you got to remember, in terms of like what he did in the playoff run, I don't think that's necessarily going to be replicated for every game during the season. So, buyer beware. This is a name that's been thrown around a lot because you heard about LeBron talking about him and his money, and he's on the Cavs, so alone you just hear about him more. So just don't overpay on draft day because of this guy. If you can get him at the right spot, I like him. But, you know, you're, he doesn't have the potential to be a top 25 type player. So just buyer beware. That's all I'm saying about and the last year, I want to talk about Taj Gibson. Now, here's a guy, and you know, when you get into the later rounds, I love to take guys that have value, even if there's not an injury, but could be huge if there is. I mean, Paul Gasol going there killed his value. I mean, it really looked like you know he could start you know moving up and, and being you know serviceable fantasy player, but Gasol just takes all his minutes. But if I mean Gasol's not exactly young anymore. I mean, if if he goes down, you know Gibson can come in and he's proven that he can be solid fantasy wise. So. You know, just not a bad guy that you can grab late that could still have value even without an injury. Close it up. So that's your power forwards. Check all the other ones out. Get in our forums if you've got any questions. Sign up for DraftKings. I got a room full of t-shirts, and I want to send them out. And Dust sends them personally. And he'll autograph them. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> if you ask him to autograph, he will autograph every single one of them. I will ruin as many shirts as you all want me to. And you can specifically put Subscribe. where you want him to autograph. It's just annoys him. That's awesome. If you could channel. do that for me, be very Subscribe detailed on that. Channel. So he just has to do more. I like to mess with him. It's awesome. Oh, I was going to block it. <laughs>